Hello. Oh. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> okay. Today is a sunny day. Is it? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Oh. She almost. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You're from Kenya. Hello. To my long time friend. <laughs> Morning. Is it is it okay? Okay. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Your Holiness, thank you for coming to Cambridge. Uh, to begin, I'd just like to. Um, my name is Cameron Taylor, and uh, I'd like to first thank the GSS executive team uh, and all the volunteers. Uh, the staff at St. John's College, the, um, and all the additional helpers from Cambridge, um, and especially um, His Holiness's private office, uh, and his representative, and uh, his uh, staff, in, and the staff in London, uh, who've made the events over these three days possible. Okay, so if we could just... Um, so, <laughs> last year um, I became friends with uh, Nawang Sonam, uh, one of the translators in the office of uh, His Holiness, who had come to Cambridge uh, for uh, you know a short learning and cultural experience, and uh, and. From there, and a, and a chance meeting with the master of St. John's College, Professor Chris Dobson, uh, this visit arose. Um, and uh, <laughs> uh, Born to a simple peasant family on July 6, 1935, and recognized as the reincarnation of the 13th Dalai Lama, a small boy from a tiny village in northeastern Tibet was uh, destined to lead uh, his six million uh, subjects. He was enthroned as spiritual and political head of Tibet when he was only 15. During that difficult period, he still managed to obtain the highest degree of Geshe Larampa, the highest attainable scholarly achievement of Tibet. Following the invasion of his land by the People's Republic of China, His Holiness was forced to leave his country 
and seek asylum in India in 1959. Since then, His Holiness has worked tirelessly to help the Tibetan people preserve their culture and integrity. Having traveled to more than 62 countries while teaching and winning over the hearts of millions of people around the world, His Holiness is not just what he calls himself a simple Buddhist monk. Buddhists consider him an emanation of the Buddha of compassion, while the world considers him an icon of peace and justice. People look to him for hope, wisdom, and strength. He's been awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1989, the American Congressional Gold Medal in 2007, and the Templeton Prize in 2012. He's the recipient of more than 84 awards, honorary doctorates and citizenships, and has authored um, over 72 books. Okay. His Holiness, he promotes values and compassion uh, for all. Uh, peace and justice. He works for religious harmony and mutual respect and encourages us to educate our hearts together with our minds. He has a keen interest in modern science and has passionately pursued it for more than 25 years of dialogue with scientists on common areas of interest such as neurobiology, quantum physics, cosmology, and psychology. His strength comes from his compassionate attitude, his sincerity, his love, and his wisdom. His Holiness maintains that our enemies lie within ourselves. He believes that happiness comes from sharing and being kind to others. Although the Dalai Lama has traditionally since the uh, 17th century uh, held both temporal and religious authority, His Holiness has moved beyond this particular tradition and forced a democracy that transcends geographical boundaries. As he rises at three in the morning to do his meditation, he cultivates his motivation by reciting his favorite prayer, so long as sentient beings remain, may I too remain that long, that long to dispel all their sufferings. Today, we're very fortunate to have him among us. Ladies and gentlemen, His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama of Tibet. Oh. Brothers and sisters, I'm extremely happy uh, an opportunity in meeting with a young, bright of the human brothers and sisters. I think in most case, you are truly generation of 21st century. So there's a real possibility to create a better world. I belong to this century, or that century, uh, including myself. So I think uh, difficult century. So now this century, uh, out of our past experience, our usual sort of, uh, sort of way of, sort of thinking, the importance of oneself, or one's own community, one's own nation, and a strong concept of strong we, I, we disregard others' right or their, their feeling. 
So that's, I feel, the ultimate source of problem. I think very considerable war based on that strong concept of we and they. So now today, even the reality itself, now that kind of sort of concept now outdated because uh, global issue, global economy, and national boundary is not important. The different religious faith also is not important. Uh, and as I say, global economy also is beyond as I say, faith, Korea, national sort of uh, a boundary. So that's new reality. I think often our problem, usually I could describe man-made problem. Uh, usually I think we uh, forget the reality. Sometimes you see, uh, so we act according the appearances. And also sometimes that, that sort of, sort of the fact Factor, right? The fact, uh, uh, the reality sometimes seems to say our own mind sort of imposes right? some kind of reality. And uh, that actually, not the reality. Uh, one's own mental projection, one's own mental creation, then act according to that reality can often become disaster. I often say telling people the Iraq crisis, Iraq and Af the Afghanistan crisis. Uh, during Mr. Bush, president, I know him right from the beginning, uh, right from the, our first meeting. We immediately become very close friends. Sometimes with some leaders, some sort of politicians, when we first meet, a little bit sort of form, too much formal. Uh, and then, you see, difficult sort of also to reach deeper level. I do not want to mention name, but some you see, leaders, first meeting, quite distance. Second meeting, a little closer. Third meeting, closer, closer, closer. <laughs> so later, I also you see, told that person, oh, our first meeting, quite distance. <laughs> so unlike that, Mr. Bush instantly become very close. Uh, I think one of perhaps I think, small sort of the example. They wish it, uh, and then uh, there's some cookies, you see, so come. Then I just to say, uh, which one is more sort of, sort of better or more, 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 more delicious? And the president say, oh, this, 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 this is very good. <laughs> very good, isn't it? Yeah, very good. <laughs> then we immediately so we become very, very close friend. Uh, so one, the, then you see, after Iraq crisis, Iraq war started or happened. Uh, another occasion, my meeting with the president. So then I told uh, directly, so I love you, I respect you, but some of your policy is concerned, I have some reservation. He smiled. So now this is example. I know President Bush's motivation, good, bring democracy and the obstacle of the democracy eliminate. Good sort of city, uh, goal. And really thinking about the freedom of Iraqi people. So his motivation also is good. But then, method, wrong method, use force, 
so. So this clearly sort of shows, uh, no matter how sort of sincere motivation, and very sort of because of the just goal, right? just goal, uh, but method, wrong method. Wrong wrong method means wrong means unrealistic. Without knowing the proper sort of reality. So that's one example. In our daily life also, you see, what you want something, uh, then approach, you see, that must be realistic way, like that. So therefore, the past century, I think many problems, mainly due to just self-centered sort of attitude. So reality, we are a social animal. <coughs> one's own interest, one's own nation's sort of interest related with rest of the nation, rest of the humanity. So therefore, yeah, I think the during the 20th century, some according to some historian, 200 million of people killed. Such immense of, of violence and suffering, and also including use nuclear, two nuclear bomb, one Nagasaki, one Hiroshima. I personally visited this area, and my first visit there, actually I met some sort of old uh, women who actually, you see, because uh, of that. Because of radiation sort of suffering. Then, I still remember very clearly there how much the heat, one bunch of needle, cup, needle, oh, melted. And one old watch, the 10 a.m. That was but half burnt. So these are really terrible, terrible. But uh, many use these things out of strong anger, hatred. Then September 11th, few thousand people killed. Mostly, of course, I think the entire population, the people who killed there, innocent. All this ultimately related here. Uh, so therefore, now 20th century becomes century of violence. Uh, that immense violence really brought new shape, new world, better world. Then we can say, oh, immense violence, very sad but brought some good things, but that's not the case. So now, here, the 21st century now, just the beginning of the 21st century, there is possibility, you see, to develop more peaceful world. Uh, peaceful means uh, no longer any problem, not that. Problem remain there. Perhaps problem may increase. Number one, Population increasing. I think within this century, some experts say 10 billion may reach, population may reach 10 billion. Then, nature, so this nature disaster also, I think, will increase. Uh, so, uh, because of global warming and some other sort of reasons, so. The, this century will not be because of the because of the free from uh, problems. So now the uh, peaceful century means whatever you see, we face some problem, we must uh, try to solve that problem. Peaceful means that's non-violence. Now, in order to carry non-violence. Uh, you should have confidence. Uh, confidence comes from truth. 
if you lie at that, then difficult to cast out that, to face that. If you stand firmly, truth, justice, honest, the power of truth is very, very sort of powerful. Then we can face the problem and you have the full courage meet the other person and talk. Uh, so the uh, willpower carry dialogue, meeting with the other party. They very much lit with emotions. You yourself a little bit sort of, sort of anxious, a uh, little bit sort of, of the as a sort of result of practice of hypocrisy, saying some nice thing. Uh, keep here something different thing. Then your position has become very, very weak. <laughs> Although very powerful nation. <laughs> but if that's the case, then difficult. Then better to use weapon. <laughs> so weapon, as I mentioned earlier, eventually brought more disaster. No use. So only non-violent way try to solve the problem. So for that, the, your, 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 your willpower is very important. That depends on self-confidence. There also is a blind self-confidence also there. This self-confidence based on truth, based on justice. Uh, it's very, very essential. So, uh, now in order to have a city peaceful century, uh, these things are very, very important. Now, you, I think uh, my generation may be now out of date. <laughs> I belong to the first century, uh, to the century, so to the century already gone. So now my, uh, my generation, now looking coffin. <laughs> if you believe hell and heaven, the thing about hell, about heaven, <laughs> I'm Buddhist, I'm thinking uh, next rebirth. <laughs> but you, these young people now, you are truly uh, uh, the generation who really can, can create new shape of this planet, this century. So therefore, uh, Indeed, I'm very, very happy and a great honor meeting uh, mainly that kind of generation and opportunity to share some of my own experience. Thank you. Now some cause open discussion, right? Discussion. Ah. Oh. Ah. Actually, I prefer, you see, they just open, uh, discuss. Oh, like. We have questions. Hmm? We already have questions. Ah. No, yes, first, you see, few questions, written questions, written questions. Oh. But then I prefer, you see, they open, discuss. Oh. Thank you so much, Your Holiness, for oh. coming to speak. Um, we have some students that would like to ask you some questions. Oh. Um, Sean? Good, thank you. Thank you for the moving talk and for coming today. I really appreciate it. Um, I was wondering, um, with the people of Boston and everyone hmm? over the world uh, facing tragedy today and our thoughts and prayers, when you're witness to violence and injustice in the world, how do you personally maintain your faith in the goodness of humanity? <laughs> Oh. <coughs> Firstly, uh, it is very helpful. You see, every event uh, when we face some sort of tragedy or some difficulties, we ha we must look that more holistically. 
uh, then uh, when you look more holistic way or uh, try to look from different angle then often a very bad sort of situation very bad event tragic event there could be some positive things and also is a possibility of good things look from different angle then now for example i lost my own country a lot of difficulties but look from another angle the become refugee is new opportunity meeting with different people uh, uh, when i was in tibet the lama was too holy so you see more ceremonial way life like that i eventually i developed real hatred towards that kind of formality no use no huh? uh, so the uh, so therefore me personally become refugee is most fortunate look lost our own country and a lot of problems It's very sad look from another angle yes that brought new opportunity at least me personally and them also you see quite no, quite no of tibetan i think generally i feel sometimes we tibetan in that because of the mountainous area you see we i think because uh, of the some meditation <laughs> or uh, a simple life we spend i think centuries that way uh, now this tragedy anyway i think really wake up tibetan uh, so positive sort of the side also there so then you see your so sadness or your anxiety also reduce this is number one number two when uh, we face some problem then i always remember uh, the eighth century is one uh, indian sort of buddhist masters scholars actually uh, he uh, express when we face a tragic situation then think about that sort of situation analyze if there is possibility to overcome that then no need to worry no need sort of to this sad because of the uh, sadness uh, instead of sadness make effort develop more sort of enthusiasm to face that because there is opportunity possibility of overcome that through effort then uh, after sort of analyze the situation no way to overcome then no use too much worry in fact you have to accept <laughs> so that uh, advice that sort of way of thinking i feel very very useful then thirdly i am buddhist i am buddhist so we not only uh, we are uh, we are not only thinking about weeks and decades or weeks and years or decades or century we thinking eons eons uh, so one day whole galaxy collapse uh, no need to much worry <laughs> <laughs> circle go like that way <laughs> last year is some people really you see serious concern about 2012 is the ending of the world war oh so some people really you see showing or ask me question you see very serious so they a little bit much of worry about that and then i i i suggest that no, don't worry that will not happen now i think i win <laughs> And now already 2013 <laughs> so in case you see and world and come okay that's the reality that's the nature okay no longer any problem <laughs> 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 like
like that. You see, thinking, you see, this wider perspective really immense help. You see, to reduce too much concern, too much sort of a sort of serious sort of uh, feeling. Uh, can keep your enthusiasm, your optimism. Next question. Great. Thank you. Stella? Thank you, Your Holiness. The Global Scholars Symposium brings together scholars from all over the world to discuss some of the world's greatest challenges, such as climate change, wealth inequality, population growth, food insecurity, and the other challenges that are facing us over the coming century. You talked about many of these in your remarks. What do you think is the greatest challenge facing the world today? And as young scholars, what can we do if we want to go about solving one of these problems? What should we choose? Because I know Thank you. you. Yes, I think I already mentioned a uh, major disaster, one problem, but that's beyond our control. Uh, then I think one serious thing is population. Uh, even today, seven billion, within seven billion, a lot of problem, mainly. I feel poverty in many areas. I think poverty really, you see, creates some kind of how say, uh, certain how say, uh, weak mental sort of uh, mental attitude. Is it? And that sometimes you see, often translate frustration. Frustration translate away. Uh, or to transform anger, then violence. So now this huge gap, the northern world uh, generally, you see, you have surplus, you have surplus, and same world. Southern world, uh, even starvation happen, and malnutrition. These young children, millions of children. When we see pictures, the mother very thin, almost with not much milk, yet, yet you see the dying child that. same human being what is wrong with these people I think we have some sort of, because of, the, because of the sources to help these people to reduce this kind of thing so here the gap rich and poor this I think one of the very very serious matter uh, so we have to, uh, you have to think very seriously so how to reduce this gap, rich and poor. Uh, then, again, nature resources. The, uh, now, because of the solar, uh, solar energy, because of wind energy, uh, uh, these are, I think, real, because the uh, as our hope in future, the use of the fuel, fuel these things is very temporary. Uh, anyone who have some sort of, uh, or say the knowledge, the using oil from deep sort of underneath, uh, you see there is sort of possibility eventually to this dry up. So. How much effect that area? Some earthquake? Any sort, any sort of possibility of more nature disaster due to you see these some kind of imbalance? Now previously, that hundred thousand years, this is certain sort of oh, cause the, uh, like oil. There, its own weight and its own cause of the, I think some uh, geological cause of the work. So, uh, more balanced, in, in, interrelated. 
that one sushi that empty. Anyone who have some knowledge? And I would like to know. <laughs> obviously, sushi, deforestation, obviously, we see a very bad effect about ecology or rainfall, all these things, you see. That's very clear. And underneath, and then also see water resources. I think American continent, the Karsachi, with farmlands area, the water, underneath water, uh, uh, decade by decade, now reducing. So I think these are sort of serious sort of the effect of nature, nature, sort of the nature balance or nature sort of element. I don't know. Okay. Thank you. Oh, the two nuns there, one former nun, one sort of still present nun. Do you have some idea? Then actually, I think Oxford or the Cambridge many years ago, uh, one, one sort of meeting, and then one, two professors. You see, we spent, I think, a few moments. Then the professor, two professor, you see, mentioned to me that then the population six million, because six billion, six billion. Uh, we discussed this, there's a gap, rich and poor. And then six million population. The southerners' living standard live because of that. Because race up to the standard of northern world enjoy. Then, nature resources. <coughs> Already some questions. These two professors, you see, mentioned that. That I remember very clearly. So now, uh, some sort of, what's the day? Uh, and specialist expert, they say, end of this century, 10 billion. Meantime, this gap, we must tackle to reduce this gap. So then, nature resources. Uh, I think these are serious sort of matter. Serious matter. Then, population. According to those believers, we entire human being is created by God. Then we must pray to God. Now, please, oh, some some control. <laughs> if those according to those those people is who simply you see believe law causality, uh, including Buddhism, Buddhist like that. So then, uh, again, our responsibility to think seriously and. Uh, birth control by force is not good, but through education, through awareness. I think in Europe, I think population rate of birth uh, reducing in many places. Those sort of society, those family, better education, they sort of also they pay more attention about that. And then third world, this area, you see they. Uh, uh, I say not, not, not that, that much of a concern. So then I usually, you see, uh, half joke, you see, telling people the best non-violent way of birth control is more nuns, more monks. That's the best, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> so these are really, you see, I feel, the real sort of the challenge. And unless you see, we make real because of constant effort, these things are really very serious. This is my view. Thank you. Tracy? Hi. Thank you for being with us here today. And one of the things that brings us all together is that we are seeking advanced degrees. So that leads me to ask you, in your opinion, what do you think is the value of academia and how do we as students discern whether to address those issues that you've discussed 
by working in the academic world or whether we seek to address those issues in more direct ways. I think this sort of uh, problem the, so the mass movement tackle this problem. Uh, that <coughs> depends on awareness or education. So I think academician is a work within the academic sort of uh, institution, and then more papers, more sort of also the uh, report uh, out of your research, and then I think share more institution uh, and also including media people. I always telling media people, media people also you see, have the, the opportunity and responsibility to educate people, not just report bad things or negative things. Uh, negative thing must report transparently. It's very important. I always say telling media people, media people should have long nose like elephant nose and the smell front and also behind what is really happening, what is real reality. I always tell them. Uh, so it is very, very important report now what, what is reality. But at the same time, the media people must sort of pay some attention about promotion of human value and the promotion of religious harmony. Uh, so, you see, the first, you see, the material need. That's those are the people, ordinary people, you see, cannot, sort of, cannot produce. Uh, now, the, those academician people who specially research this field, and then, you see, let, let them know. Uh, I think that's more important, I feel. So, these sort of, what is the academic, uh, academic people, I think you can think the wider way to serve, give new ideas, new awareness, these things. Instead, you, see, you yourself is you working somewhere, uh, only two hands, effect, effect limited. Better to educate more people, 100 people, the 200 hands, or 1,000 people, 2,000 hands. Uh, million people to uh, two, two million hands. At the much effective, isn't it? That's my view. Thank you, uh, Sung Young Jong. Then, then oh, the sorry. academic, academic itself. Now, uh, I have some sort of kasota uh, critics, <laughs> maybe. This is exist. Yesterday, also I mentioned yesterday, existing. A modern education system is very much oriented about material values, not sufficient to sort of pay attention about inner values, as I mentioned before, not the sense of concern of others' well-being and a less sort of self-centered attitude, uh, not uh, out of teaching uh, or uh, so, uh, through God's blessing, not that way, use our intelligence properly, uh, then no. You see, we need physical health. For physical, he physical health, physical comfort, we need material development. But mental health, mental comfort, uh, cannot, cannot produce by matter. Uh, I think even later part of the 20th century, I, there will not be any sort of uh, supermarket which can sell peace of mind, I don't think. Uh, if you carry a uh, big sort of check, check and go supermarket shouting, oh, I would like to buy peace of mind, then I think the people laughing, oh, that person, something wrong here. <laughs> So peace of mind must produce, must develop oneself. 
not from outside. So in order to do that, just to pray to God or, or Buddhist, just to pray to Buddha, please give, please give me peace of mind. Uh, frankly speaking, if God uh, can do that, I think today uh, he must also give us peace of mind because entire human population, God's own son. Still not very clear. Your real point, real point. Now, uh, I never sort of think myself or some sort of leader and I must lead people. I never thought that way. I consider myself as a simple Buddhist monk. Uh, as a sort of part of my practice, as you mentioned, so long space remain, so long sentient beings suffering remain, I will remain in order to serve them. So that's my favorite sort of city prayer. So according to that prayer, my body, speech, mind, dedicate, well-being to other. Like that. So if someone uh, came, to, also came to ask me, then my duty to share some of my experience. I never sort of was the Kasoda Chisanda. I never go this around or oh, I'm leader. I have sort of everything to Kasoda uh, to show you, uh, to teach you all your problems. I never said that. Never advertising. Huh? If so, Buddhist monks sort of rule. Very clear. Unless someone asks you the teaching or explanation, you should not teach. Uh, so, I never sort of, or say, Kasoda, visit different places. Uh, I want to Kasoda. Kasoda should be preach. Preach or something like that. No. So, <laughs> is it because of that? Uh, can answer your question? Where? Like that? I don't know. I, I guess. I guess I think what I'm, what I'm trying to um, express is I think we all feel some some sense of responsibility because we've been given these these great um, mm -hmm. these great honors. Uh, that some I'm responsibility, sorry. and I think with that there is maybe you know, a bit of a pressure as well. And so I guess what your, <laughs> what your well, advice would be for us, yeah. because we need to, I think, handle this responsibility. Um, oh, that's right. I think as a human being, we are part of seven billion human beings. Uh, each of us have the moral responsibility to take sense of concern of well-being of seven billion human beings. As I mentioned earlier, it's today's world, everything interdependent. World happy individual naturally get maximum happiness. World face some difficulties that every individual uh, cannot escape from that. So therefore, for your own but it's too strong. The white, white. <laughs> Last year, you see, my two eyes already so operated. Because I didn't mean to get it. So too strong, bright, not good. Uh, but in any way, so therefore, uh, think more about uh, well being of other. That's the real source of your own satisfaction. Think just oneself. More worry, more anxiety. Think about others' well-being. You get inner strength and get satisfaction. And I think important, at the end of our life, when you re reflect your whole sort of life, you led your life some sensible. Sensible means 
some useful to other. But then, with the last breath, you feel, okay, now my life is just spent for some useful to other, to, to, to other. Then you feel happy, no regret. Whole life, you see, carried with extreme self-centered attitude and making money, 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 dad. At the, end, at the end of that day, uh, you already know, now no use any sort of this money, material values. And worst thing, in order to gain some material sort of, uh, because of the benefit, cheating other people, bully other people, exploit other people, then at that moment, you really feel great sort of, because of the, uh, because of the regret. Oh, uh -huh. like that. So, they think others' well-being is the best way to get individual uh, one self sort of satisfaction, like that. I think this not only just my sort of view. Number of scientists, medical scientists, and brain scientists. Now many of them, you see, carry experiment to people, some training about compassion and mindfulness. They found an obvious effect on their mental state and eventually their body health. Like Emory University, Stanford University, and then Wisconsin University. There's some professors, great scientists. This is the last few years. They already, you see, carry some experiment. Some people, you see, give them some kind of training, or some kind of training of mind, or more awareness about these different emotions. And about two, three weeks training. Each day, one hour, half an hour, like that. And after three weeks, I mean, before that training start, they check blood pressure and the amount of stress, these things. Then after three weeks training, again check, blood pressure reduce. Uh, stress of, uh, amount of stress also much reduced. As a result, the person become much happier. And they are sort of, because of the draw. Interaction. Ah. Interaction with their sort of uh, fellow student or fellow sort of uh, friends, M much healthier. As a result, the person become much happier. See, these purely carry these sort of experiment academic level. Not talking about next life or not talking about heaven. Simply the how to build healthy body, happy person through mental training. So I have a serious sort of the concern or critics, the existing. Uh, education system mainly oriented about uh, material value. This is not adequate. Now we must sort of think seriously how to introduce a modern education system about ethics, uh, about moral ethics. Now here is a one problem. Uh, some friend in the West from in the West, some Christian, uh, some Muslim, <clears throat> uh, they have the view the moral ethics must be based on religious faith. Then according in, uh, and also you see, uh, there is some sort of tendency, the con concept, secular means some kind of disrespect about religion. Uh, according to Indian understanding about secular means respect all religions 
and also respect non-believer. One, my friend, a former Deputy Prime Minister of Government of India, uh, Advani, Mr. Advani, uh, once he told me, in India, almost 3,000 years, this tradition, respect non-believer. So, uh, when Indian constitution, you see, or the finalized, based on secular, because India, multi-religious community, so society, therefore, the constitution uh, based on secular. So, freedom, complete freedom, respect to all religions, and also including non-believer. So, therefore, uh, when I talk, when I use the word uh, secular, according to that understanding. So, then, they, realistically speaking, in secular education field, these moral ethics must be based on secular way. Then, uh, moral ethics based on secular is then fit in secular education field. If moral ethics based on religious faith, then uh, some difficulties. And then also, no matter how wonderful one religious sort of tradition, it never be universal. So, universally acceptable sort of because of that. Uh, moral ethics must be secular way. So we already start with help of these scientists. Uh, uh, last year, we already now start some serious sort of work with help of some universities in Delhi. You see, they're making draft how to how to introduce, uh, how to introduce in modern education field. So we are working. So perhaps I think this year or within the next two years, I think we may be ready. The yesterday also I mentioned, and I would like to send this famous education sort of institution. Then uh, some uh, say they, uh, some discussions. Uh, any sort of advice, most welcome. So, otherwise, you see the generation who, d who come through that kind of education, then uh, the moral ethics is something, oh, this is a religious matter, something like that. So then those people who have not much interest about religion, then they also have no interest about these moral ethics. That's the problem. So as I mentioned earlier to the Korean, you see, uh, we have to think long future, I think remaining, I mean, the, this century, perhaps I think if we make some effort through thorough research and the education field, some sort of what's the day, education, about brain as well as about heart, warm-heartedness, then within this century, I think we can develop new outlook through education. Then real hope's there. Otherwise, in the whole society, that these leaders also come, come from the society, the basic sort of way of life, the culture, just a matter just the money, just the material. Yes, next question. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, uh, can we please uh, thank the His Holiness the Dalai Lama again for... No, no, no. I think... Don't worry. Please sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Mm. Okay. So, uh, 
Oh. I think another, I think 10, 15 minutes. I want to spend with you. Hmm? <laughs> yes, you know. Sometimes I feel, you see, this Kazuri, Kazuri, live, uh, spend time with young people. Oh, and that moment, I also feel I'm younger. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I jokingly telling, you see, uh, among old people, then sometimes I feel uh, you go first or I go first. <laughs> so sorry, what, 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 one, 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 my generation here. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> So I would like you see, to know the, the comment, uh, the expression by two uh, professors and many years ago. You see, the, the, within, so at the six billion population, the southerners' living standard was uplift up to raise uh, northern, northern sort of people's sort of standard. Then nature resource already, was already questionable. So now, what, what do you think? Say, uh, we must sort of Kasoda, reduce this gap, reach the poor. That's not only morally sort of important, but practically also, you see, the, this huge gap also is a source of problem. Clear. One time in Washington, when I give talk, some public talk, uh, I expressed that Washington, the most richest country's capital. But the suburb Washington, many poor families. Uh, and because of poor, some violence also more in this area. Even those rich family, when passing through this area, sometimes feel a little sort of anxiety. So they, this sort of poverty or huge gap it's also it's a source of problem. We have to deal with these things. So now, uh, suppose now today already 7 billion. So any, anyone, this is clear answer now because of the uplift, uplift up to a similar sort of living standard, basically more or less some standard, then nature resources some difficulties or through scientific sort of research there's possibility to uh, to find like solar system or solar energy and wind energy like that any answer any explanation about that yeah. oh yes I agree that it's very important to close that gap between the very rich and the poor. But I think when we think about solutions, we can also think about what we want to do at the end of the very rich. Because in addition to the very poor not rising up very quickly, we also have the rich constantly getting richer. And I think that's an area actually where a lot of religious and spiritual teachings from all different faiths can really think more about what are the actual values that people need in life instead of chasing a seventh sports car think about what do rich people actually need and what is a suitable level at which we can limit the top from escaping, because that will make it a lot easier for the bottom to catch up. Because right now we're trying to catch up a bottom with a top that is also running away ever faster in pursuit of greater material wealth. So I think that's an area in which um, different faiths have a lot to offer towards the solution. <laughs> Religion, uh, I think, uh, like the Christian religion, I think, uh, I think over 2,000 years, 
already sort of worked in these things, in this field. Uh, again, uh, the, in order to make more equal, in order to reduce this gap and richer, richer, sort of richer side, richer group, but less rich. That I don't know. I think in the uh, in sort of let's say socialist countries, uh, 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 for example, China, uh, say uh, during let's say the Chairman Mao sort of era, they built casa, community hall, or community or. What's what we call community hall or something? Hmm? I don't know. I don't. Really. Communes. Communes. Commune. Commune or something. Oh. So, uh, work together and share everything together. The principle. Very good. I love that. But in reality, not much help. You see to. Because of to get richer, those poor, poor people. So then, Deng Xiaoping, as a Marxist, his whole life dedicated <laughs> for a uh, revolution. Uh, but then, you see, he saw that kind of, sort of method not sort of realistic or not much sort of beneficial. So he uh, start more capitalist way. So I think uh, millions and millions of Chinese, particularly in coastal area, they are living standard, much improve. So you re reduce rich family, rich people, not necessarily you see, helping to the poorer section of the people. Uh, one day I met, uh, several years ago, I met some sort of Indian family come from Bombay. Looks very sort of wealthy family. And then they asked me blessing. And I told them, I have nothing, say, in the, in the form of the blessing. I have nothing to offer. Uh, but the, you have the sort of ability to receive blessing. That is from your wealth. Uh, some portion spent for education and health to those, particularly education, to those the uh, slums uh, uh, people. Uh, that is the real source of blessing. So I think the again education. The people, individual family, let become rich, but some I think company in in America, some you see they donate a lot of money for uh, social well-being or these things. I think that again you see through education, more compassionate feeling, they make money, then from their profit you see share with more people, I think that's better. That's my view. Some kind of control, a richer family. Uh, I don't know. Then finally, everybody remained poor. <laughs> <laughs> so I really don't know. These are very complicated. And also, I think the system, also you see, some sort of uh, uh, some effect. Uh, so actually, when former Eastern European countries, of course, after Berlin Wall disappear, uh, I have, I think, almost, I think, I'm the first sort of foreigner visit or call President Havel, then uh, Czechoslovakia. Uh, I, uh, I expressed at that time, which year? Because of the, because of the, 
So in any way, uh, I have opportunity to visit this in that country uh, in, uh, on the invitation from President Harbour. Now he no longer. Wonderful person. Uh, I think the sound looks, he very nice to me, so he is a wonderful person. <laughs> <laughs> this <is> silly, <laughs> silly logical. <laughs> he really, you see, a uh, very good person. Oh. So at that time, I express, now you, newly as a free nation or independent nation, tr truly independent nation now, now you have the old sort of socialist sort of system. You already, as what several centuries, several decades, you already practiced that. Now that centralized economy collapsed. Uh, so the individual, the market-oriented sort of economy is very, very powerful, dynamic. Now time comes, some kind of synthesize the socialist sort of ideas, concept, keep. Meantime, some uh, market-oriented sort of economy also, you see, implement. Some kind of synthesize new sort of economy system. Uh, if, you see, possible, then this is the right time to carry more experiment. I expressed at that time. Still I feel that the socialist sort of thinking, uh, well-being of poorer section of people. So therefore, I always describe myself uh, as far as socio-economy theory is concerned, I'm Marxist. Still I'm Marxist. Uh, uh, although I never read full about Das Kapital. <laughs> <laughs> I heard something from here, something from here, including Shemin Mozadung. Uh, I got some lesson from him. Really wonderful. The main thing is, when I, when I was in China, uh, and particularly touring many different states, I met a number of dedicated party members. Oh, wonderful people. Really dedicated. Uh, serving, serving to uh, people, and particularly working class people, that means needy people. Wonderful. I prefer socialism uh, rather than capitalism. But at the same time, the reality, just socialism without sort of inner sort of strength, are difficult. Everybody become poor. That also not good. So, so in any way, mm, the system of government level, some sort of the regulation or these things, uh, also you see effect. But I'm not expert in this field. I'm just outsider. Some criticize, <laughs> that's all. <laughs> Nothing to show concrete sort of what's the method. It is easy, I think you also, I think, very easy to criticize but if you really carry the work, I think more difficulty, <laughs> more difficult. <laughs> oh, thank you. I really enjoy. Thank you very much. Everyone, please stay seated um, for His Holiness to exit the chamber. Thank you. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my generation, my brother. <laughs> yes. A year, a month, and a, a day older. <laughs> <laughs> A 
拜拜，拜拜，拜拜，拜拜，拜拜 ，Thank you， 拜拜，好 ，Thank you，Go。From India? No, from Bangladesh. Bangladesh, yeah. right, right, right. It's nice meeting you. Atisha Dibhamgara's birthplace. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like that.